Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Bava Metziah Daf Nun Bet. This is the Daf for Shabbat. We're going to get started at the Mishnah at the bottom of Nun Aleph Amud Bet. So after discussing Ona'a when it comes to purchases, sales, now we're going to discuss Ona'a when it comes to money. So Kama, when it comes to coins, Kama Tehe Hasela Chasera Velo Yeheba Ona'a. How much can a sela decrease in value? And we still will not consider this Ona'a. Okay, which is going to be a bit of a tricky language, but we'll get to that in a bit. Rabbi Meir Omer Arba Isarot, which is the same as saying Isar Ledinar. Okay, what does that mean? It's the same as saying? Okay, well, let's go and talk about currency. This is going to be a little bit confusing, and in general, we're going to be a lot of new concepts today that we're going to discuss, and we're going to talk about coins. Isar is one of a smaller value coins. It was a copper coin. There's two, okay, we're going to go like this. Two isarim in a pundion, two pundionim in a mea, six mea in a dinar, and two dinar in a shekel, and two shekel in a, in a sela. So we want to get from isar to sela. We're basically going to get to the fact, okay, it's basically two times uh, two, times two, two isarim to a pundion, two pundion to a mea, times six, Okay, that gets us up to 24, because six mea and a dinar, and then four dinar or two, you know, two dinar in a shekel and two shekel in a dinar, that's another four. So we're going to end up with 24 times four, which is 96. So there's 96 isarim in a sela. So now, four isarot in a sela. If we decrease the sela, meaning now what do we what happens here? We have a coin that's a sela, and the sela starts decreasing in value. Okay, it starts eroding, wearing away. If it erodes to one, okay, four isarim. If if an isar is one of a ninety-six of a of a sela, then four to this number, right, is basically times four. We're going to end up with one in twenty-four. Okay, we're going to basically divide ninety-six into four, get to twenty-four, and then we're going to basically have. There's, okay, and, and if all this mathematical and all that is just complicated, all you have to do is simply understand 96 isarim in a dinar, which means the ratio is one to 96. So four isarim to, to one sela is, right, one in 96 to a sela. I hope I said sela, not dinar, and I've been confused. But we have 96 isarim in a sela, and then basically we're going to do one in 24, four isarim over 24 times four, Four over 96 is 1 over 24. So the ratio of ona'a in the coin is 1 in 24, according to Rabbi Meir, which is the same as, okay, if that wasn't complicated, we're now going to do the ratio of isar to dinar. Now, the easiest way to do this is, again, 4 dinarim to a sela. So that means a sela is 96 isarim divided by 4 is 24 uh, isarim in a dinar. So now that's very easy. One isar to 24 isarim, which is the dinar, one in 24. Okay, so the, what they're basically telling you is it's kind of funny because the Mishnah started off ha saying, how much would a sela be decreased in value for it to be considered ona'a? And the answer is, well, it's four isarim for a sela, which is the same as they start telling us about dinar, even though we didn't ask about a dinar. Okay, but one isar to a dinar. Rabbi Yehuda Omel. And now once we get this, all the others are going to be relatively easy. Again, all this sounds a little complicated outside, but it's not so complicated. Rabbi Yehuda says, Arba Pindyonot. Okay, now he says it's four Pindyonot instead of four Isarim. Okay, four Isarot. It's four Pindyonot for a uh, Sela, which means, again, the key word is missing here for a Sela, but that's because the question was asked about a Sela. So it's four Pindyonot, uh, eight, sorry, four Pindyonot, which is eight Isarim. So if it was before four Isarim, and now it's eight Isarim, instead of being one in 24, it's going to be one in 12 because it's it's double the amount of Isarim compared to a Sela. So the the rate, right, the, the divisible is going to be exactly half. So instead of one in 24, it's one twelfth. And Rabbi Shimon Omer, Shmona Pundyonot, okay, again, double the amount we just had. We have four Pundyonot, now it's eight Pundyonot. So again, we're going to do 12 divided by two is six. So it's now going to be one sixth, okay? It's a much bigger ratio. And this matches, by the way, 
the one six that we've been talking about Ona until now. Shne pindonot ledinar. Oh, I, by the way, I skipped before. If it's four pindonot for sela, then since the ratio of sela to dinar is one to four, so or right, yeah, one to four, then pindon ledinar would be if it's four pindonot, then it's one pindon pindon for a dinar. And Rabbi Shimon says eight pindonot, which is one six, as we said. Shne pindonim ledinar. Okay, which is two pindonim for for one dinar. Okay, that's just simple math. Again, eight divided by four is two, and that's how we get it. So again, you might find, right, some people this might be very easy. For some people, this might be complicated. The main thing you need to know, Rabbi Shimon says one-sixth, Rabbi Yehuda says one-twelfth, and Rabbi Meir says one-twenty-fourth. That's it. That's what you need to know right now. Now, in general, this could be a complicated dot. Not so much because of the mathematics that we just did, which were a little bit complicated. And again, we're talking about all sorts of new things like currencies and coins and things that we might not necessarily be so familiar with. But what's also going to be complicated about today's stuff is that both our Mishnah and a bunch of Tanaitic sources we're going to quote seem to have very complicated language. Usually Mishnah or Brito, they're not so complicated. Today, we're going to have a lot of things that are not very clear cut. And the Gemara is going to struggle with them and try to figure out what they mean. So there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to read and not quite understand them just yet. Ad mutai, okay, this is not one of them. This is not, this is pretty self-explanatory. Ad matai mutar Now, what this means, okay, let's go back. I got you know, caught up with the mathematics, but what we're really saying is, if I use a coin like this, let's say I give a coin like this to the seller, okay, I buy something, I give this money, and I was using a seller coin, which is actually worth one-sixth or one-twelfth or one-twenty-fourth of the value of the seller. So, what, what happens? Well, that's ona'a, which means also that the owner, right, the seller can go give me back my coin and say, what are you doing? Can't use this coin. Now, obviously, they don't realize right away. And you can imagine, it's hard to understand, right? Just like prices fluctuate and all that, money especially, right? What if, if the coin is somewhat devalued, you don't always notice that. So at the time, let's assume we're talking about the seller. At what point can the seller come back and say to me, hey, take your coin back. This was a bad coin you gave me. Well, it's enough time to basically figure out there's a problem. So how much time would that be? If you're in a big city, so you go to the local, right? As much time as it would take you to go to the local money chain changer, ask them to evaluate, right? You have a little bit of a concern. You go to the, the money changer. They tell you that's the amount of time you have. And then obviously, I guess enough time to get back and tell me, here's your coin back, which is not too long. Bakfarim, if you live in the villages, Arav Shabbatot. Because then we assume until Arav Shabbat, when people come and buy things and sell things and, you know, there's money being interchanged, then, you know, also like not everybody lives in this. If you don't live in the city, the problem is you don't really have a money changer accessible. So once you you use it, right, Rashi says, Shabbat la hotza'a be'erev Shabbat, le sudat Shabbat, az yidam yuchal lo tzia v'yikablu ha mimenu. Right, I, you know, let's say I was the sales the salesman, and I took this coin, and then I tried to use it on Friday to buy food for my family, then another seller might know better than me and say, hey, what are you doing? You can't use this coin. So I get a few extra days, basically, or depending on when exactly it happened. This is a bit of a strange statement. If, let's say, it was, you know, I was the storekeeper and I got this money from someone else. It could be, by the way, the reverse. It could be the person who got changed from the storekeeper. I got changed, you know, I gave, uh, I was the storekeeper. I got this money from you. And I went and I found out and I didn't do anything about it. But I happen to know you. We happen to be friends. I don't know. I know who you are. And I go to you even after 12 months, basically, you should accept it from me. It's a little bit strange. Why do I all of a sudden get 12 months? We'll see in the Gemara, they're going to understand this a little differently. There, and this complicated language is going to be even more complicated. All you can have is, is a complaint, meaning if I give you your money back after 12 months, you have to take it, it sounds like it's saying, and all you can do is complain to me, meaning you can register a complaint in the complaint department and say that wasn't appropriate what you did, but more than that, you really have no nothing to do about it. Okay, we'll get back to that. This is another line that's not going to be so clear. 
I can use this for master shaming. What does that mean? If I have a, a coin that went down in value and is now worth less than a uh, six, the 12th, the 24th, whichever opinion we go by, I can use it for master shaming and I don't have to worry. That means if I have this coin in my house that's devalued, when I take my produce, my master shiny produce, and I turn it onto a coin, right? I redeem it onto a coin. I can use this coin that's not so great. Now, it's unclear. Let's say, okay, it's a it's a D, it's a dinar, which is worth twenty four isarim, and this happens to be worth less than one, right? When that's, we're we're down in isar, it's worth only, or let's just make it easy. Let's say it's worth twenty isarim, okay? And I have. 24 Isarim's worth of produce. It sounds almost like I can put all 24 onto this coin or perhaps maybe only 20, it's not clear, okay? And I don't have to worry that when I get to Jerusalem, no one will take my coin because if nobody takes my coin, ain't no Ella Nefesh Ra. You're a bad person if you don't take my coin. Now, if this meant that I used a 24, like I used a dinar, which was worth 24 Isarim, but this one happened to be worn away and was only worth 20. And then what it says is I could use it as if it's 24. And when I go to Jerusalem, you should take it as if it's 24. And if you don't, you're a bad person. That sounds weird. Didn't we just say it's ona'an? Ona'an means I can't do this. So what this means exactly, we're going to have to see in the Gemara later. I don't want to give everything away. Then it leaves up no suspense. Okay, this is a complicated passage, so I want to at least leave an element of suspense. So you're wondering what's going on here. Urimini. So the first thing we're going to do is bring a contradiction, and we're really dealing with the wording of the Brita, of the Mishnah, and in the end, it's really going to be a bit of an issue of semantics, the first thing. So the Mishnah had said, how much could it be less in this Sela, and there won't be Ona'a, which made it sound like, and I, I really didn't focus on this, because in the end, we don't say this, I tried to focus on what it actually means in the end, but it sounds like if it goes down in value, until 124th, right? Till 124th, this, this Sela is now worth four Isarim less. Then we actually say there won't be Ona'a, meaning there'll be Ona'a less than that, right? So it would have to go down a little more than four Isarim for it to be considered Ona'a. So now the Gemara says, but the, the Brayta says, and it contradicts, Ad kamatea Sela chatzera v'hiyeba Ona'a. How much does it go down? And it will be on a R said, and it won't be on a, which makes it sound like it needs to go down a little more than that for it to be on a. This says how much, and it will be on a. And it then continues with the exact same opinions we saw. Four Isarim, four Pindyonot, two, right? Eight Pindyonot, exact same amounts. And that is on a. So that seems a little weird, but the Amra Papa is going to say this is just semantics. Amra Papa lo kashe, tana didan kashe mi mata la mala. Our tana and our Mishnah went down to up. That means... How much would it start going down in value? One, two, three, four, up to four, it won't be on a. At four, it's already on a. Up to meaning up to and not including four. And Tanabara, the Tan of the Bright, did the opposite. It said, well, if it's 10 Isarim, it's obviously on a. If it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, up to four, meaning down to four, it would still be on a. Anything less than that, it won't be. Okay, so they're each just going in different directions and each one is using the word odd. One is using odd up to, but not including. And the second one is using up to and including. Okay, so four basically is going to be your amount of ona or whatever amount, according to whoever is speaking, right? Four was Rabbi May. Okay, now, my shnab is sela de pligi, or my shnab is talit de lo pligi. So now they ask, wait a minute. We learned ona is one six. Why in a talit, right, in clothing? Why here are we talking about three different opinions? And we didn't see three different opinions when it came to a talit. Why in money are there three different opinions about what amount is on a? One six, one twelfth, one twenty fourth. Amurava, mantana talit, Rabbi Shimoni. Oh, the Mishnah where we saw on a is one six. He says that's Rabbi Shimon. And presumably we hold like Rabbi Shimon. And we can just ignore the other opinion. In other words, the other opinions exist. They exist also by talit. They just didn't tell us. Abaye gives a different answer and says, no, no, no. Talit ad shtud machilimish. Da'amre inashe ashik ligabayich v'shave l'kresayich. Okay, let's explain that in a minute. Okay, I'll stop. 
what he says is until a sixth, when it comes to clothing, people are willing to pay up to a sixth. That everyone's willing to pay for clothing. When it comes to money, though, they're not. Okay, and let's explain why. So Abai says, the reason is because people say, and this is like a, a, peep, a thing that people say on the street, Ashik Ligabayef. For things Ligabayef that are going to go on your body, you're willing to overpay. You don't mind paying up to a sixth. A sixth already, that's too much, but you're willing to pay. People pay, okay, this goes on now. You pay lots of money for clothes. People know that they're paying over the, the given rate. They pay it anyway. That's important to them. This part is a little less significant because we're going to see, but happens to be part of the thing people say. And that's why that's a big question. Why is this even here? And it, it seems to complicate things. But when it comes to food, people pay at value. They're not willing to pay so much more, like clothing, but they'll pay at value. But when it comes to money, and it really seems to be comparing the talit and the money, the food there kind of throws things off because it sounds like food people only pay the value and not more. But food, we would say it has on just like clothing. It's a little bit tricky. Tells what raises the issue, but we'll put it aside. But a seller, but I would never, in other words, what's the story? Food I need for my body. Okay. Clothing I need to cover my body. Okay. And people like to look nice and close. So maybe that's why they're they're willing to pay more. But when it comes to money, I have nothing to do with money that's not at the proper value. Nobody will, money is just meant to be spent. And if I if I can't spend it, then it's useless to me. So money, I will not be willing to overpay for. And that's why there's a machloket about money and people get come up with different rates of a much lower rate of what will be considered on ah, because people will not stand for that. Okay, gufa. Now we're going to go back to this bright. Now what's interesting is usually a gufa is we're going to see something we already saw. In this case, we started the bright all. We quoted was that first line. Ad Right? How much will it be? And we brought it just to compare the language. It will be on our words. Our said it won't be on our, but we resolved that. And now we're going to read the rest of the Brighton and try to understand some other things in that Brighton. So let's start from the beginning of the Brighton here. Gufa. So how much will it be reduced in value that will be considered on our? This is going to be word for word like the mission. Rabbi Yehuda Omer Arba Arpindyo no Pundyon Ladina, right? Again, the first opinion, Rabbi Meir, 124. Second opinion, Rabbi Yehuda, 112. Rabbi Shimon Omer Shimon, Pindyo no, Shne Pindyonim Ladina. So far, so good. Same thing, 16. Yeter al Kane, any more than that, this is new, and also a line we're not going to understand yet. Mukhra Bishovya. Okay, any more than this, it sounds like any more than, right? If it's not 16, but less than 16 that devalued. Or if it's not one twelfth, then less than one twelfth. If it's not one twenty fourth, then less than one twenty fourth. According to each opinion, any less than this, you can actually use the sella for sella. Okay, even though it's devalued a little bit, like let's say it went down two isarim instead of four isarim. So you can use it as a sella. It sounds. Oh, actually, no. This sounds like The truth is, bishovya is very complicated to understand. Is it for its value or meaning as you know, a sella minus two. D minus two isari, isarot, or is it mean as a sela, actually? Okay, it's unclear. We'll get back to this. I come at, now we have a different issue in this bright lakaima. How much can it go down in value that you can actually still use it? Okay, now we have a separate problem, which is, the idea is that the coin starts wearing away and it has less, less metal in it, right? Less, let's say, silver. And then it starts devaluing and it can go down and go down and go down. At what point do we say, you have to throw this out, okay? You can't use it at all because you can trick people with it. Okay, now we're gonna talk about this and, and, and explain it a little better in a minute. So now, the Sela Ad Shekel. If you have a Sela coin, now the assumption is a Sela coin is wider than a Shekel. So if you have a sell a coin and it thins out, so now you have something that could be valued as a shekel. Let's say it thins out by half, which is a shekel is half of a, the value of a, of a sell -a. So let's say it thinned out by half. So people will know that it's no longer valued as a sell -a. They'll see that sell -a is much thinner than a sell -a normally is, and they'll evaluate it as a shekel. But once it starts going under half its value, and because the shape is wider, and the shekel is narrower, 
if it was a shekel, they would be able to realize that when it went down in value, it wasn't worth a shekel anymore. Because this was wide and thinned out and thinned down to a shekel, it's going to be very difficult to tell once it goes even below a shekel. People won't be able to differentiate between is it a shekel, is it less than a shekel? And then let's say you're the owner, you know exactly what it's worth. You know it's worth a shekel minus a few isarot, let's say, or isarim. I think it should be isarim, even though the mission calls it isarot. But you know that. But people you'll, you'll use it with won't know. They'll know, again, if it was a shekel sized coin, the smaller one, and it devalues, they'll know it devalued. But because this started off as a sella and turned into a shekel and is the wrong shape, people won't be able to differentiate between a shekel or less than a shekel. So basically, once it gets to less than half its value, you have to basically, we're going to see later, destroy this. You can't keep this anymore because it's basically a, a coin that can be used to deceive people. And it will be used to deceive people, you know, you or you might likely use it to deceive people. So that's what it's asking here. So ad kamati and you could still keep it in your house until a shekel, which sounds like, although we're going to see later, maybe not. Sounds like it could go down from a sela down, 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 down to a shekel. At a shekel, that's it. You got to get rid of your coin. Bedinar ad rova. In a dinar, it goes down to a quarter of its value. Now this is weird because a a, a shekel, a sela went down half its value because a shekel is half, right? Two shekelim to a to a sela. But a dinar, it says down to a quarter, which we assume right now means a quarter of a dinar. So later the Gemara is going to ask why this one devalues by half and the other one can devalue by, by three quarters, basically, until it gets down to a quarter of its value. In the end, we're going to understand the line differently to make them equal. Pachotmikin, which is also a line we're not going to understand. Again, I told you it's a complicated doc because each line already has a million different meanings. Any less than this meaning, it sounds like it's saying, when the seller goes down to a shekel, let's say, any less than a shekel, isar, meaning one isar less than a shekel, asur. Asur sounds like you can't have it anymore. This is a little weird because if we said it's until a shekel, you shouldn't need to go down a shekel minus an isar. It should go down even a teeny bit under a shekel. You would have to get rid of it. So we're going to have to re reinterpret that verse as well, that line as well. And when we have something, now here we're going to assume now, if you have this coin that's supposed to be destroyed, is not, right, is not its its value, is less than a shekel, let's say, which already could be used in a deceptive way. You can't sell it even for its value. Let's say you say, I evaluate this as a shekel minus four isari. Let's say. You can't go to sell it to, we're going to see right now, lo litagal, lo lecharam, velo leharag. Okay, this, by the way, would be even, I believe, even if it's a, if it's a sella worth, if it's anything worth less, like the amount of ona'a less, you can't sell it not to a peddler who's suspicious that they would use it and, you know, just give it to people for its actual value. In other words, I sold it to them for its real value, but they're going to trick people with it. We now are going to have a category of people who like to trick with money. Peddlers, okay, they're known to be suspect that they might do that. Not to a very violent person or a murderer. Why those people? Because they'll fear people into accepting this. Like you'll go get something from them. They'll want to give you money and they'll scare you into saying, take this bad coin, right? Now, again, it's worth less than its value, but they're going to insist that it's worth a higher value. And you know it's not, but you have to take it anyway because they might kill you. So you're basically called you're basically helping you're abetting a crime right you're helping someone else to do a crime by giving them something that could lead them to trick someone now you're not really helping them but you're in a sense putting something in front of them that's so tempting for them to use to trick people that it's your you know you're not allowed to do that so what do you do with this coin that's kind of out of commission well you can put a hole in it and give it as a necklace for your your son or your daughter Interesting that men wore necklaces. Amarmar. So now we're going to go back and try to understand some of these lines in the in the bright that we didn't understand. Besela ad shekel bedina ad rova. So again, the sela goes down half in value. You you have a problem already. The dinar goes down to a quarter of its value. You have a problem. So why why not at half? Maishna besela ad shekel or maishna bedina ad rova. Why that one half and that one quarter? You know, three quarters it could go down. My rova de katane, nami rova hashek. A quarter doesn't mean a quarter of a dinar. 
A quarter means a quarter of a shekel. Now we have to go back to our amounts. Remember, two dinarim to a shekel. So a quarter of a shekel is worth one dinar, which is uh, which is worth half a dinar, which is worth half of a dinar. So rova doesn't mean reva, a quarter dinar. It means a quarter of a shekel. So amarava daikanami dekatani. And in fact, we can infer this from the, the wording because it says rova velokatani revia. Usually if we mean a quarter, we mean revia. Rova is like saying a quarter, like in, in America, right? There's something called a quarter. Now, a quarter happens to be a quarter of a dollar, but we could say a quarter is a quarter, a quarter of a shekel. And therefore, when we said bedinar, until a quarter, it meant the, the coin called a quarter, which was a quarter of a shekel. Shmamina. So now we've equated both those things. To which they ask, okay, but still it doesn't really make sense. Why are we talking shekels if we were talking dinarim? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Milta Agav Orche Kamashma, they wanted to teach you something, by the way, which is the Ikadinar de Atemi Shekel. Okay, just like we have a Sela can be go down all the way to a Shekel, and you can create a Shekel basically out of a worn away Dinar, but any less than that you can't, you can also make a Dinar out of a Shekel. Okay, now, why is this important? Okay, because Misele Rabbi Ami, and this supports Rabbi Ami's statement, to Amar Rabbi Ami, Dinar Habami Shekel Mutar Lekaimo. Dinar habami sela asur lekaimo. Now this makes sense because a dinar that comes if again you have a worn away shekel, it becomes a dinar. That's fine because a dinar is half a shekel, but a dinar is only a quarter of a sela. So remember, a sela can go down to half its value, just like any coin can go down to half its value. But beyond half, you have to get rid of it because someone might not know the difference between again this wide coin that's now super thin whether it's super thin like a shekel or super thin like a dinar, people won't know to differentiate, so you can't use that coin at all. So what they want to teach you is a dinar can come from a shekel, but it can come from a from a, a sela, because that's already beyond the halfway point. How do you exactly get this from the fact? It, what I think what they're trying to say is they wanted to bring shekel into the picture just so that you would know the dinar could come out of a shekel, and that's why a dinar could go down to a quarter of a shekel. It doesn't really say that in, in, in it. It's just kind of, and implied the fact that we're mixing shekel and dinar together here and talking in shekel terms while we're speaking about a dinar teaches you that even though we didn't mention it, a shekel could go down to a dinar and you could have a dinar made out of a shekel, a worn away shekel. It's a little bit weak. It's a little bit hard to understand why, uh, how you really get that from there. And, and if they really want to teach that, why didn't they just say so explicitly? Okay. Uh, part of, again, there's a lot of questions on this stuff. Um, so yeah. So now we explain this line. Okay, you have to remember where this came in. We started the Braita with Ona'a, okay, which goes down, right? We had a 24th, a 12th, a 6th, just like the mission. Then we added at the end, it said, how much could it go down and you would be allowed to still keep it, right? And then we said, sell it to a shekel, dinar to rova, anything less than that by one isol, isal, you can no longer use, which didn't make any sense to us. So, and we assumed it was referring to that part about, right, at half value, you already can't even keep it. Forget about ona'a, right? It's not ona'a anymore. It's just, this is something you could use to trick people. So now, my kamar, what, it, what is this saying? So, amar abai hachi kamar, what it means to say is, pichatam sela yoter michdei ona'a isal asu. Basically, because it doesn't make so much sense, to read it the other way. So Abaye said, this is coming to teach you that if it goes down a sela more than ona'a, in other words, I'm sorry, if a sela goes down more than ona'a, more than, let's just take Rabbi Shema, more than a sixth, and one isar more under that is going to be forbidden. To which Amalei Rava, In other words, that doesn't make any sense to say that because <clears throat> what's the difference if it's, once you're past ona'a, it shouldn't matter if it's one is <laughs> less or any little bit less. It makes no sense. So El Amarava, Rava says, no, what it means is, sela isar lidinar asu. Okay, what it means is basically, and then this is really teaching you nothing new. It says, if the sela went down one isal, which is ona'a, according to Rabbi Meir, one out of 24, remember? Oh, um, Right, one out of 24, one isar to one sela. No, sorry. Pichata sela isar le dinar. The ratio from an isar to dinar, which is 124, 
If your sale went down by 124th, which would be 40 Sarim, then it would be forbidden. That's not exactly the simple reading of that line, but that's how they read that line because otherwise it really doesn't make any sense. And Ustama Kirabi Meir. And what it's basically telling you is even though they brought the three opinions, then the Brighta went to kind of say, we kind of side with Rabbi Meir and therefore brought this example of it going down by one Isal, which really doesn't mean going down by one Isar. It means going down by the ratio of one Isar to a Dinar, which is 124th. And that's supporting Rabbi Meir's approach. So now that we finally resolved the lines of that Brighta that were complicated and hard to understand, now we're going to move on to a Mishnah and you'll see why we bring this. Actually, we're still on the bright because you're going to see we're going to bring a, a problem with this bright. So for, a problem for this with our bright. A seller that gets ruined, okay, and now you're using it just to, right, so it went down more than half its value. You use it for your weights and measurements. So this now has a new purpose and it now becomes a vessel because it's used as a scale. And then it can be susceptible to impurity. Now, at what point can you use it as your weights? Or remember, you have to get rid of it at a certain point. Once it's under half its value, so I shouldn't have said this. It's really, once it's, let's say, beyond Ona'a, you don't want to be using this anymore because you'll be off in value. So you'll use it for weights. But at what point do you have to get rid of it? Lesela shnei dinarim, right? Two dinarim, which is the shekel. That's half the value of a sela, because one sela is four dinarim. Pachot miken, if there was less than that left, meaning it went down even more than to two dinarim, yakot. So you have to destroy it. Now, what about yeter al kemai? What if it's more than that? What if it's, now we said before, it can go down the cellar, down, 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 until you get to a shekel. So now they want to say, is that really true? What if it's more than a shekel? Meaning a cellar that depreciates and goes down to a shekel, we understand, everyone will understand it's a shekel. But maybe they won't be able to tell whether it's more than a shekel, less than a shekel, and this could cause all sorts of problems. So less than a shekel, we already said for sure you have to destroy it. What if it's more than a shekel, but less than a, uh, a sela? Let's say it's in between, you know, a quarter of a value, it's devalued. So yetra came my, I'm a Rav Huna, we're going to have a machlok and a moraim. Rav Huna says, pachomi ken yakot, yetra ken yakot. It's only at a shekel can you keep it. More than, less than, must be destroyed. Rabbi Ami Amar, pachomi ken yakot, yetra ken yakot. Less than that you have to destroy, like we said. But more than that, between a cell and a shekel, like we thought originally, you can leave it. So now we're going to have two problems with him turning now to Amabet. Meitive. Yeter aken mochra b'shovya. More than this, uh, you sell it for its value. And that was that line we saw before. Remember? Which we didn't really understand what it meant. Now we're going to get back to that. That was the one line in the bright we really haven't explained yet. So any more than that, you can sell for its worth. Now that was written. Okay, let's just go back to the bright for a minute. The Brighta said, right, once it's more than Ona'a, you can sell it for its value. So now, So now we assume it's talking about a seller that goes down in value. You can sell it for what it's worth. Okay, so now, what we assume right now that this means, we tried not to explain it too much there, but we assume right now this means if it's worth a seller, a quarter, that went down a quarter of its value, so you can use that money for a quarter of its value. My love should pechata yoter mifte onata. Now, doesn't this mean, right, it's more than ona'a, but less than half its value, right? It, went, it was somewhere in between going down from a sela to a shekel, somewhere lower than ona'a, right? So it's already devalued more than ona'a, but not yet gotten to half. So they say, and then it says, oh, so obviously you don't have to destroy it. That seems to go against Rafunu, who said you have to destroy it. To which they say, lo, we understand this differently. Yeah, they say, oh. what it really meant was, it hasn't yet gone down even the ona'a. Okay, let's say it hasn't even diminished 124th or 112th or 16th, depending on what your opinion is. It went down just a little bit. At that point, you can actually use it for its Full, complete value. In other words, a seller that hasn't devalued that much is still worth a seller. Okay, we thought maybe Shovya meant what it's valued at right now. And we thought maybe it meant more than Ona I went down. Well, you can use it for what it's valued at right now. No. And then that would prove against Rav Huna. So Rav Huna would have to explain this. Well, Rav Shovya means you can sell it as if it's a seller. Okay, because that amount of difference of fluctuation of, of wear and tear, not so significant. Second question against Rav Huna, made today. 
עד כמה תפחת ויהיה רשאי לקיימה. How much, okay, now, what did we see before? Again, a line in our bright, huh? How much can it go down and you can still keep the coin? Besela ad shekel. So now, what did we assume? How does it devalue? It goes down a little by bit, right? It gets worn away, worn away, worn away, worn away, which seems to clear, right? My love de pachet porta porta, a little bit at a time, which means that you can keep it until it goes all the way down to a shekel. Again, that goes against Rav Huna, who said, if it's more than a shekel, less than a shekel, you got to get rid of it. Only if it's exactly a shekel, can you leave it? To which they said, no. Who says that's the way it is? It could be. Maybe it fell in a fire and got destroyed all at once and devalued to a shekel exactly. And that's when you can keep it. But if it goes down little by little, no, you have to get rid of it before it gets down to a shekel because at that value, which is not clear what exactly it is, you can't actually keep it going. Okay, next. Amarmar, another line we have to deal with in the bright time. So we said that you can, excuse me, that you can tear a hole in it, make a hole, and hang it as a necklace. Okay, that seems fine, but here comes another source that contradicts. You actually can't use, once it goes, right before we said you can make it a mishkal if it's more than ona, but less than this half. Now, once it goes beyond half, you can't use it for your weights, right? And this makes sense because we said you have to destroy it. You can't even throw it among like junk stuff that you have. You can't make a hole and hang it on your children's neck. So that seems to go against the swords that said you could, right? Or bright. Ella, what can you do with it according to this bright? Oh, yes. Okay, there's going to be four ways of destroying it completely. Oh, yes. Okay, that's. Um, wearing, like sanding it down, or meld it into something else, or break it, or stick it in the Dead Sea where it will be destroyed. How do we resolve this contradiction? Either Rabbi Elazar said, or Rav Huna said the name of Rabbi Elazar, there's a way to do a hole. You could put it on the side of the of the coin or in the middle of the coin. In the middle of the coin, it's actually fine. And the bright that said, the first bright that we saw that you could do it is in the middle of the coin. On the side of the coin, it's where we're worried. Because what are we worried about? If it's on the side of the coin, you could actually reshape the coin into a circle, get rid of that hole, right? Sand it down on the sides, make a new coin and use it. And it will be, right? It's a red, right? It, you would basically trick people into thinking it's a good coin. So because of that, you can't use it in that way, but you could still use it if you stick the hole in the middle where you can never do anything with that coin. So now, okay, that was all. We brought up this Breita, and then we had to understand once we mentioned the Breita, all the other lines of the Breita. And the whole reason we got started with this was because the Breita said, and we compared that to the Lashon and our Mishnah, which said, and then we just said, oh, each one's kind of coming from a different perspective. Right? How much does it deteriorate? How much right from the up, down, down, up? Okay. Then we just got off, which wasn't such a tangent because it was really all the topics that are mentioned in our Mishnah, and it got a little more into them and trying to understand the wording of this bright time. Now we're going to go back to our mission and resolve some issues that we left opened about the mission. So now we're going to have a similar question we had previously, which is, and earlier we asked what's the difference between regular ona'a for, for clothing and this ona'a that there there was a mach, there was no machloket, everyone says one six, and here there's a machloket. So we either said maybe there's a machloket there too and they just didn't mention it, or maybe there's a reason to differentiate. So same question here. You might remember Rashi quotes us in case you forgot from a few dapim ago on daf memtet. Right? Didn't say people who live in the boondocks and people who live in the big city. It just said, right, country mouse, city mouse. No, it didn't differentiate. It said, right, we're basically talking about everyone is the same law. You have enough time to go ask somebody, right? Ask your friend, right, what the value of this is. And then you can go back and complain after that. You can't return it anymore. So now, Amra Baye, Kitna Nami Maniti Bitali. Ah, the Mishnah there that was talking about a talit, this is the same kind of answer as we had before, is talking about in the big city. And then there's no contradiction because it just wasn't mentioning what happens if you live in the country, right? Or in the boondocks. 
Rava Amal, Rava gives a different answer and says, Talid, call inish kim lebegave. Everybody knows the price of a talit. So it's very easy to find someone in your, right? So maybe you didn't realize when you overpaid, but lots of people in your community know. So it's pretty easy to find somebody. Whereas Selah, money is different because Kevan, the love called Inish, Kim Lebegave, Ela Shulchani, really only the money changers know the real value of money, right? You wouldn't be able to tell a counterfeit from a non counterfeit or all sorts of things, right? It's much harder for an average person. And therefore, Hokak, Bekrachim, Deika Shulchani, so if you live in a city and there's money changers, great, go find, go send to someone. But bikfarim, if you live in the villages, deleka shulchani, where there is no money change, there are no money changers. Anar veshavatot to in the shuk, right? Until you go and use it in the shuk, and then we have a different criteria. But that wouldn't be relevant clothing because people know generally the price of clothing. Okay. Continuing on, im hayam ikira filu lachar shnei masar chodesh. So now we have this weird thing, which all of a sudden, if you know the person, you get more than 12 months to return it. That seems strange. Hecha. So now they say, where are you talking about? Ibikrachin, if you live in the big city, Hamart Shukhani, all you have is to you see the money changer. Ibikfarim, if you live in the villages, Hamart Adave Shabbatot. It says Tol Ar Shabbat. Where do you all of a sudden get a whole year and plus? Amar of Chistem Midat Chasidut Shanukan. This is Midat Chasidut, meaning. If I cheated you and gave you a coin that was, you know, and, and accidentally maybe, or maybe on purpose, it's a little bit weird, you'll see in a minute, and I gave you the wrong coin and you now want to give it back to me a year later. So if you give it back to me, I don't actually have to keep it. I don't have to take it back. But I should be, if I want to do, like be a good person and a pious person, even though it's a little weird to call me a pious person after I use this coin, which wasn't worth what I, what it seemed to be worth, but let's put that aside. But if I want to do midat hasidut, which is kind of like lifnim shurat adin, I want to be, you know, extra good here, I can take it back. So they say, well, then something doesn't make any sense here. What was the next line? Ein lo alav All he has on, on the other guy is a complaint. Now, who's the subject of what here? How do the pronouns work? Ihachi am a seifa. Something doesn't work here. Ein lo alav Laman. If I decide I'm going to be a really nice person and I'm going to take it back even though a year has passed and it's way beyond. Well, all I can do is complain. Now, what do you mean I, all I can do is complain? If it was me and, and I could just say, well, I have a complaint against you. I can register a complaint. Well, the If I really didn't want to do it, then I shouldn't have accepted it. Once I accept it, I can't start complaining. I decide to go beyond the letter of the law. I do me and then I complain about it. That makes absolutely no sense. And if it's you complaining, well, you certainly have no reason to complain. If I accept it after 12 months pass, you certainly can't complain. What do you have to complain about? I actually took your money back. I mean, you could complain, why did you give it to me in the first place? But it's a little late at this point and, and I took it back. So what are you complaining about? To which they answer, Hachikamar. Ha Achel. Actually, that line is talking about a different case entirely. Let's say I wasn't doing me that chasidu. You tried to give it back to me after 12 months. And I say, what are you talking about? The time way past. You had till you go to the Shulchani or you had till Erev Shabbat. You certainly didn't have a year. And I say, I'm not taking it. Then, then you can just complain to me and say, hey, you know, it's really not nice. You gave me the wrong amount of money. You, know, you gave me a coin that wasn't good and, and you won't take it back. But it's just a complaint because it was your fault for not dealing with it in time, right? It happens to me lots of times where you have a warranty for a year, it happened to me, and then the thing broke and I just didn't take care of it. And then I went after a year and I said, listen, it broke a few months ago. And they looked at me like I was crazy. You know what? I'm, we're not going to help you. You know, like you had the year. Why didn't you come to us before? And they were right. So I could complain and say, you know, it's not nice. But in the end, you know, what, you know, what, what am I going to say? Okay. Next section. No, the last line in the Mishnah was, okay, so now we have to understand what this means. So I'm a Rav Papa, Shmamina. You can learn from here. Hi, man demokim azuze, mikre nefesh ra'a. hu It sounds from here like we're saying, if you won't accept money that's bad, then you're called a nefesh ra'a. And this would be, let's say I give you a coin that's a little bit, less than what it's worth, and you won't take it, even though it actually could be used. In other words, it would have to be a case, because why else, right? If you're not going to take money because 
you know, it, it's, it's, it's devalued and, and no one's going to take that money. Well, then I can't complain that you're not taking it, right? That's not a nefesh ra'ah. That's just, you're being smart, right? So it would have to be a case where the money could be accepted, okay? And then um, what we're basically saying is like this. Let's understand the Mishnah simply, that I can take a weakened coin. Let's say it was worth 24 Isarim, and now it's worth only 20. I can put on, right, my coin. We don't, we don't know what this means yet, but let's say I could put, so I have 20 Isarim's worth of fruit. I can put it on this coin, even though this coin is weakened in value and it's only worth 20. But when I get to Jerusalem and try to use that money, if you won't take that money, you're at fault because that's money that actually could be used. It just happens to be devalued, okay? But it could be used. But that's only if the money could actually be used, not if it can't be used. That's what he's saying. And in fact, this would support Chizkiah. Say a little Chizkiah, the Amr Chizkiah. Bale porta, porta b'shovia. Bale chalala mechalala b'yafa. This is a very, another confusing line. Chizkiah said, if you go, when you go to Jerusalem and you take your money that's that's less worth only 20, even though the coin should have been worth 24, you bring it to the money changer. And you want to get coins. Remember, we had the whole thing. You want to change it into coins. They're only going to give you 20, you said, and they're not going to give you 24 from your weakened dinar because it's not worth that. So, but when you when you put it in your in your house, it sounds like you could put it for its actual value. So you could take 24, okay, or, or we don't know. Let's just, we don't even know what this means, but let's say when you go to redeem, when you go to put it onto the coin, you could put it on, you could put it on the coin. And when you go to, it, it, it's very hard to read this. So, but let's just read it like, um, trying to think about which way to read it because there's different ways to read it. Let's just leave it right now. We don't really know what this means. So the Gemara asks my Kamar, what exactly does this mean? And in fact, what they're going to say is it doesn't really add anything to the Mishnah because the Mishnah already said, and this says also, Chizkiah said, nothing new from the Mishnah. When you go, you go and get its value, right? You can you can be mechalel your fruits on it, no problem. And then you get to Jerusalem and they have to, you know, just give you prutot for it, right? It's value. So they say, hachikam. And the way they're going to understand this is like this. And this is very weird. And the Gemara is going to say this makes absolutely no sense. Even though when you go, okay, so now let's take our dinar. Now I'm going to explain it one way and I'll, I'll be more clear than before because I was being wishy-washy because it's hard to understand what the Gemara actually thought in the original. What they're saying about Chizkiah is he says the following. I have 24 worth of fruit in my house. So now I, when I take that, coin, that seller that's worth um, 20, okay? I took it to, forget what I had at home. We'll get to that in a minute. When I take that coin that should have been worth 24 and it's only worth 20 and I go to Jerusalem and I try to get coins from it, they give me 20. But when I'm in my house, I can take 24 worth and put it on this 20 coin because the coin originally was 24. Now this is absurd because then we're losing master shaming money here. To which the Gemara says, what are you talking about? Remember, December Chizkiah, the Mazalzal, the Master Shani, what? He thinks you can you can be Mazalzal, you know, be uh, disgracing Master Shani? That, that's basically ruining it. And in fact, Hamar Chizkiah, Master Shani, She'en Bo Sheva Pruta, Omer, Hu V'chom Shom Mechulal, Ama Ot HaRishonot. L'fi She'i Afshado L'Adam L'Tzam Tzay Maut. Okay, this is a totally different thing. We're running a little bit late, so I'll try to do this quickly. Since you can't exactly know exactly the amount and the value of your fruits, let's say your fruit's worth 25, you should put it on a coin worth 27 or something, a little bit more so that, right, you don't make a mistake, okay, which is the exact opposite of here. Okay, so that's Lefisha Yev Shalad Samsem Autaf. So therefore, if you end up with fruits that are less than even a pruta, this is totally not connected. But you can basically just add it onto there because no matter what, you already added some extra. You put in some extra leverage, just you know, to have extra just in case. So therefore, you can actually add less than a shabapruta onto ma'ot you already have because because you've already done it, including extra. Okay, you put in a little like to have a little leeway. So therefore, of course, if Chizkiah says that, he's not going to say that you could take fruits worth twenty four and stick them on something worth only twenty. That makes no sense. To which they reinterpret the statement, my biyafa bitorat yafa. What does that mean? To trace the lomas al What it means when it says biyafa, and we'll end with this line, it means, okay, now we have to go back and understand Chizkiah. Chizkiah says, when you go to redeem it, you redeem it for what it's worth. It was 20, okay? So 
basically your coin that was originally a dinar, which was worth 24 Yisrael, is now only worth 20, so you get 24. And Baba Chalala, Mechalala B'yafa. B'yafa doesn't mean what we thought it meant. When you redeem it, you when you put your your stuff on the coin, you do it as if it was 24. No, you do it, B'yafa, meaning, okay, it's a little hard to understand how they translate this word, but for it's how good it is now, meaning for the fact that it's 20. So basically, I have my fruits that are worth 20. I redeem them on a coin that's 20. And then I bring it to Jerusalem and they give me 20. And that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so that's how we understand that in the end. Because Trezi Le Lomas Al Zalina, we're not going to do it, lower it in two ways. Okay, meaning, what does it mean be, be lenient in two ways? So the first way is that I actually can't, the Chiddush here is that I can use a bad coin. I can use a coin that's worth less. I just can use it only for what the coin is worth. And that's now going back to the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, and anyone who won't accept this weaker coin for its weaker value is a bad person. I wasn't asking them to accept it for 24. Of course, they're not going to give me 24 for it, but they should at least give me the value of it. And that's why I can use Master Shani, put it on this coin, because if anyone won't take it in Jerusalem, they're really at fault. Okay, it's hard with very long doth. So we don't really have too much time to review, but basically we had a lot of statements about Ona'a with money, and we saw about what, number one, Ona'a, what's Ona'a, and then we saw the second part is um, how much can it go down in value and I have to get rid of the coin because it might cause other people problems. That was in the Sprite that we saw. From there, we got off trying to understand the different lines of the Sprite, and then we had to go back to the Mishnah and understand what, why we're differentiating. We had a few times why we're differentiating between clothing and this when it comes to Ona'a. Each time we had different explanations, maybe there really is no differentiation or really maybe there is. Then we have, what about the, the 12 months? We had to understand that a whole bit differently. And then we had to understand what the master Shani was. And that took some time to figure out what exactly that meant. Okay, that's it. Long out for Shabbat. Um, not much we could do. It's complicated topics and a lot of new things that we needed to explain. With that, wishing everybody Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot Tov.